Hello everyone. Good evening. It's a great pleasure to welcome you all to the 13th edition of IGDC. This year we have 120 plus eminent speakers sharing their invaluable experiences, insights, trends and professionals as well as personal journeys over the next two days. Today in this session it is an honor to have Vishnu Murthy with us and talk about making animated movies using Unreal Game Engine. Before we jump into the session I would like to introduce Vishnu. Vishnu has been around in the game industry for over 17 years with 20 plus games to his credit having worked on AAA titles like Battlefield, Resident Evil, Speedy Gun Savage and many others for various platforms like consoles, VR, PC and mobile. Vishnu is considered as a pioneering force in the game industry. Vishnu has been a speaker and mentor at various industry events and has been an advocate of high fidelity games using the Unreal Game Engine. Vishnu has been championing various news initiatives at Gametronics like virtual production, motion picture, meta humans etc. Currently Vishnu is serving as studio head and art director at Gametronics. Just to give you brief info on session format, we have 30 minutes for the presentation and last 10 to 15 minutes are reserved for the Q&A. Audiences can type their questions in the Q&A tab. Only question asked in the Q&A tab would be taken up with the speaker. The feedback form for this talk will be shared in the feedback section. With this intro, I would like to hand it over to Vishnu. Vishnu, you can share your screen and start the presentation. Thank you so much. Sure. Hey guys, I hope you guys see my screen and super excited to be here. Like, uh, I hope everyone is safe and doing good. And, you know, uh, myself, I think, uh, Mr. Rupesh has, you know, briefly about me. That's, you know, and so it's been a 70 years experience, you know, doing all, you know, completely games and, uh maybe you can think about like okay why uh the 17 game 17 years plus experience is like purely into games so never worked on any animation movies such you know stuff so maybe you might be thinking that you know why uh, a video game artist a video game producer you know, guy who's talking about animation you know uh pretty interesting even for us also uh you know uh i'll just you know uh quickly walk you through it so the topic is you know as he said making animation movies using unreal so why are we you know talking about unreal uh, and all those real time you know stuff uh, these days for especially for the you know developing uh, uh, animations so let's get started and this is who we are like we are a game studio and we focus completely games where we do games for gamers very pretty hardcore you know sort of games and we are technology passionate guys we you know who always look for you know uh, new technologies and you know uh, we have in house so you know developing team and you know technical artists sort of you know team and largely we develop for video games for a VR large you know, platform and other you know, uh, playstation kind of stuff and we have a dedicated team you know you know who always do the research and all the other stuff uh, that's what we are and uh, a story the story that we know we're going to tell uh, is basically you know uh, uh, this is the testimonial and i'm going to talk about the tarak mehta a case study which is basically you know uh, done in completely unreal and you know uh, of course others uh, you know as a creation everything is happening in maya and the rest of the complete uh, production have you know finished in unreal itself and let me just uh, play this video for you Uh, wish to sorry to interrupt but uh, we can see only your screen uh, we can't see your presentation running we can only see the powerpoint software oh really oh yes okay it's a uh, f5 mode 
see what's going on. Ah, uh, yeah. Now we can see. Now you can see. Okay. Yeah. So I think I'll have to run in this view itself. Probably. Let, yes. let me let me just try it again. Can you see now? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. Probably, unfortunately. probably you just play. Yeah, play in this mode itself. In this mode itself. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'm here. I hope audio is visible, no, audio and video visible. Yeah, this is a small, you know, clip of what we have created in MGL. And uh, so why, actually, why are we, you know, uh, looking for new technologies and, you know, uh, what are the challenges that, you know, that we are facing, you know, existing pipeline, traditional pipeline. So traditional pipeline, I'll just quickly brief about traditional pipeline. Also. Traditional pipeline is kind of, you know, linear workflow, like, you know, it's like uh, a First person finishes the task and then it, that thing goes to the second person. He finishes his job. It's like a very linear one you know, of work culture. So that's where you know a lot of issues like you know you cannot immediately you know quickly back and forth and you know, do all the changes uh, which needed. So very you know for the directors it's kind of you know restriction because it's uh, you know that's what they say uh, you know uh, once we finish a you know, sort of layout or something. You know, once the layout is done, you know, it gets freeze. And then later, uh, even if, when the final output comes, okay, even if the director thinks, you know, that other camera, you know, should have been make more sense. Like at that point, changing the uh, cameras and everything might be, you know, kind of, you know, little hassle. So at the same time, uh, rendering heavy, because we need to have a very, very strong piece render the each and every frame so render heavy and very expensive as well and the lack of clarity also because in the traditional pipeline let's say uh, i'm a texture artist so i i do the general texturing using mari substance painter or whatever whatever it is better and then i'll not be able to see the final output because after that it has to go to you know uh for go for the lighting and then after that it has to move within it uh the final render after to final interrupt render, again yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt again. We can still we can again see your original uh, presentation only. It's not proceeding. So no, I'm I'm not proceeding actually. So I'll just okay. So you're on that forward. slide itself. Okay. So audience have been uh, requesting. Uh, okay. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm Please continue. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So let's say I'm a texture artist and you know I'm doing it. Like I'll not be able to see the final look. Well, you know, unless it gets rendered. Uh, and the posted component, everything is done. So that's where you know a lack of clarity, which is you know being in the you know, traditional pipeline. And the the foremost thing is cost super heavy, you know, to produce the movies. At the same time, you know, uh, when we let's say like you know we used to make a uh, movies like a one million dollar cost of. Now we are making a movies with just a thousands of you know uh, dollars. So the price, the cost of production got reduced drastically just, you know, just because of the real time, you know, uh, stuff. Uh, and the next slide, why real time rendering? Like uh, generally, like, you know, it's a better quality and faster rendering because let's say uh, if the traditional pipeline uh, generally takes each and every frame around uh, full HD, it takes around half an hour, where in the Unreal, it takes around less than a minute Dep even even if you go with the higher sample count and etc and one more big advantage is it allows you to do you know a quick experiment because everything with the lighting everything you see the final you know outputs that's where you know you can immediately change okay i want this camera angle is not working okay let's let's shift the camera angle to some other you know, angle 
and this lighting is not working for the level. Immediately change the uh, lighting also. Everything happens real time. And I'll show you a couple of you know uh, videos as well for that. And collaborative. This is the key actually over here when it comes to real time. So collaborative. Let's say uh, let's say I'm I'm building a scene. <clears throat> okay. Uh, in Unreal, so a lighting guy, he's working on, uh, he's doing his lighting stuff, and some uh, a 3D artist, he's importing all the assets which need to be, you know, inside the environment. He keeps on improving, you know, importing the assets and you know, play, you know, play, placing it together. At the same time, a post process guy, who you know, who does all the you know, post process and other effects also. So he sets up. So basically, everybody's working together on the same scene, so that. Even the molder also, he can immediately put this asset in the Unreal and see in with the final final settings, with the final you know lighting and everything of it. So it's kind of a collaborative work. So filmmaking is all about in a collaboration, uh, you know, which is uh, which gives a better results. And far most important is save time. So we save a lot of time uh, because we quickly experiment, we produce better quality output. More iterations means better, uh, no, better output, right? So, uh, and the same time we save for render time, everything. Un unlike traditional pipeline, okay, I put some lights and you know, uh, hit the render button and let it, you know, let it render overnight. Let's come back tomorrow morning and see. That's where the problem actually. Like till the more, you know, next day morning. I'll not get clarity what exactly I have done there, like unless I see the final output. So here, instantly I check everything and done. Okay, this is the uh, final output. Is it a desired output? Okay, let's let's call the director. Okay, uh, get it, get it uploaded. And if it doesn't more like it, immediately you know ask him to sit next to you. Get all the changes done as per his requirement. Get approval there itself immediately and then finish. Hit the render. So next day morning you have a final output. Next day morning, uh, that sort of things. So, so we in real, you know, real time pipeline, we don't, afraid, you know, we don't afraid to take a chances. Like we keep trying all those things, so that you know, and allow us to do the lot of experiments instantly, and do it together. Basically, know exactly what you need to do. Uh, every artist, you know, uh, you know, can see the stuff, and jump back and forth like uh, use the lighting basically like we use the lighting uh, so that maya and unreal is connected both are connected so whatever stuff we do in maya everything is you know replicating with the unreal itself and you know uh that's the seamless pipeline of you know between the Maya 3d tools and unreal is you know a phenomenal that allows you to do a lot more you know things in a shorter span of time and grab everything and do choreography. So this is the important point actually. And <clears throat> like get everything, final scene every, and everything, and then uh, ask your choreographer, ask your director, and ask him to. If not, if you are not going with any, you know, uh, fixed uh, animatics or anything. So this is more important you know, for indies who is you know trying to do you know, new movies or something. So get all the assets, import all the characters, and then you choreograph there itself using a motion capture. That's, a, that's really you know, a great way to do the stuff. And case study of Tarak Mehta, what we did, like, you know, it's around for 200, uh, 2000 plus animations, 30 plus characters, massive size and moment. All these things done 60% lesser resource, the lesser manpower. Generally, traditional pipeline probably around 50 to anywhere between 50 to 60, you know, resources people use and uh, production duration somewhere around 15 to one month. <clears throat> you know, that's the duration people go for. You know, it depends on the quality of the you know, uh, project also. If it is more uh, more quality targeted, it might go in a little further. And pipeline is goes like this idea, and you know, a lot of parallel things happens. You know, modeling, rigging, surfacing, and layout at the same time, storyboard concept, etc. And pretty clean way of you know um, understanding. You know how Unreal Pipeline can go. And art creation, what we have done, we have used Maya. 
pretty much and this is the base model and then tech got textured then and this is the final look the minute we import so we can see the final you know output there itself because the lighting and everything set by right, already so because it's happening parallel so we're not waiting you know lighting artist to finish his task both are going simultaneously and import to unreal <clears throat> so again it's a you know pretty simple way uh, nothing new here so we import assets and uh, we set if whether it's a skeletal mesh or it's a static mesh because uh, environment all those environments of goes into skeletal mesh all the animated which has the bones and everything those goes into uh, a static mesh sorry static mesh and all the bones things uh, you know all the animated stuff which has the bones those goes into uh, skeletal mesh and these things get imported in the sequencer and sequencer does the job basically sequencer plays all the animations and everything and we got it and here over here we got to <clears throat> follow this kind of a structure get the asset import sequencer have a uh, folder structure very nicely based on the short wise if you are going in a short wise method and then finally once the final sequencer is ready final sequencer again uh, go to movie render so we wanted to reduce this you know whole process we want to make it everything on one click of button so that's where you know we created a tool <coughs> so that's an <coughs> import tool so what it does whatever we're doing here <coughs> everything takes care by this tool <coughs> this is in-house we have a technical team so you know uh, so we emphasize more on technical art you know technical art <coughs> we keep writing shaders and everything you know so we created this tool this tool does like the minute you you show the path from your explorer <coughs> and hit the import button let's say i have a short one short one has the 10 characters uh five props just an example <coughs> five props so if you are doing manually you have to import all these 10 characters manually import separate uh, import put them in a folder and then drop everything uh, one by one on in the sequencer so we didn't want to do this you know tedious kind of a job so so where we created this tool immediately <coughs> excuse me uh immediately you hit import button it imports everything and creates the sequence and and the next one build msc <coughs> most important actually so you know um never work on a short wise uh, this is my personal suggestion. Like, uh, if you build a short wise, you're restricted. And the, when you do something in the next time <coughs> for the next shot, you'll have to rearrange everything in a new uh, account to the scene game. So, build everything like a big MSU world. Okay. Uh, have a nice layout and everything when you do. And then finish the complete scene. <coughs> Since you're building everything like a full, full world MSU scene, including Sky Dome. Far mountains, fog, far fog, and everything, <clears throat> and the volumetric clouds and etc. So once you have the theme, you can use it for the movie production. At the same time, this can go into the game also. At the same time, it can go into the VR experience and the VR make, uh, movie machines also. Because basically, you are actually creating asset one time, but using you know multiple purposes. So it's not that you know we finish an animation movie and you know we stop. <clears throat> so there will be games coming based on that story. There will be VR experiences based on the story. There will be maybe some location entertainments, you know, some rides and etc. might come on the based on the same environment, same story. <clears throat> so it's like a multi-platform ready if you build uh, enough stuff in Unreal. <clears throat> so that's the biggest biggest advantage if you go with you know uh, real-time technology. And it's not, uh, you know, and the same time, what personally, what we do, <clears throat> so we, we, you know, we have a multi-talented people, uh, a, a person who can do modeling, texturing, lighting, you know, uh, all the stuff, you know, who can, you know, in the Unreal itself. So we have, a, you know, sort of these kind of people. So everyone works parallelly. <clears throat> it's not that, you know, I, I do this and you do this kind of stuff. And yeah. It's like a multimedia avenue that you know uh, future of creating you know, future of creating content like you you make once use it in a various locations use it in the use it in the various forms 
and yeah at the same time this is the lighting that you know <clears throat> we do uh, so, so for the lighting we actually you know uh, used a ray tracing which is the, you know a greatest thing because in unreal <clears throat> when we we do games so what we do uh, for the performance point of view uh, when you know we bake the lights so basically we bake the lights get the light information on the textual form and those will be assigned in the second uv channel you know gaming way of you know uh, getting the lighting down <clears throat> but whereas here characters are moving and uh, even if if i if i have a, some hanging lamp or a lamp or something which is like you know uh, movable <clears throat> so having all these active live you know uh, active elements so we cannot bake the scene because the minute you bake everything static everything becomes you know fixed light and shades everything fixed so we don't want that way <clears throat> so that's where you know we figure out you know, okay let's try rtx you know, let's enable rtx and because unless we bake the scene we'll not get the light bounces and you know basically fg and you know gi uh, these things final weather and global animation and ambient operation so in order to get these three so we had to enable the ray tracing feature so that's where you know ray tracing is taking care of all the you know Final gather and global innovation and down, huh? embed operation, and it worked really, really well. And VFX side, we used again uh, different uh, requirements. So we used Unreal Niagara particles. One more thing, when the ray tracing comes, uh, cascade particles doesn't work, so you have to use the Niagara particles. So Niagara particles for more advanced than cascade, <coughs> definitely and more handy and we use the houdini for the liquid simulations and etc and some effects from the maya and the animation pipeline is the crucial because uh, this is where the most of the people get stuck <clears throat> because how do we get the assets how do we get the animation into the scene how do i align them in the right way and you know get it in the uh, sequence and get it rendered so uh, this is where the you know, most of the resource call you know resource most of the cost goes. So when you you know when you produce the animation, so we use the motion capture, facial capture using iPhone motion capture. We have uh, you know different various you know, tools and keyframe animations. Also, we used you know, different places where we know we cannot use the motion capture. <coughs> I'll show you some of those you know clips uh, where we had to use the most <coughs> very very minimal uh, shots. Where we went for you know keyframe animation, and uh, most important thing is you uh, whenever the possible you know uh, possibility is there, use the physics, Unreal physics animation, physics based animation. <coughs> this is more important. Like if you're breaking something, don't animate that. <coughs> Let Unreal to handle that. Actually, you make it like a physics object. Okay, uh, you throw something on it. Let it fall naturally. You assign all the gravity. You know mass all the values physics values assign it let it you know let until to do the animation so that's a smarter way of you know doing it because in the game industry we largely you know use these kind of physics based animations pretty much like in a car cars even if you if you're doing a car <coughs> what we do we uh, we create a path and we set up a car physics and everything and then uh so the car you know roams based on the you know, path that we have already created so all the traffic system, crowd system, we do it pretty, you know, really, really smartly. So and same approach, we you know we should uh, incorporate in the you know animation uh, sector as well. And the second, uh, yeah, this is the motion capture, and uh, this is how we capture animation. Like uh, this is like uh, pretty early stages, you know, <clears throat> the capturing we was testing. Uh, facial capture and animations is that this is like you know just to show that you know how we uh, here we go this is the jump we tried and he is falling down yeah this is the, this is how we captured the animation and the facial animations we capture separately and join them together <clears throat> he was doing very intense uh, you know uh, <clears throat> skating stunts so that's where like you know uh, we we wanted him to focus on all the skating stuff. Other actions, so we did together, and these things. And 
yeah and <clears throat> motion capture cleanup data it's pretty much everyone knows so just uh, add it just just to know uh, so cleaning the mocap data and having a multi layers of this animations and then accessing based on that and some of the places where we had you know had a keyframe animations or you know largely some kind of these kind of like pretty complex you know getting these kind of uh, you know animations using uh motion capture might be a little challenge you know we can't ask people to fly so, so that's where you know we had to do some of the manual animations especially even this child also we could manage with the uh, uh, capture suit <clears throat> some of the best animations and camera this is almost a final stage like, uh, when we you know have a director next to us and set up the camera like which which you know part of the object gets into the focus and you know what are the things which goes out of the focus everything set there itself and uh, you see the final output and freeze the shot and this all these cameras we we kept within the sequence itself because uh we were doing the you know, batch rendering so when the batch rendering grows all the camera you know, sequences get into the batch rendering and they just get render, renders for the night so camera has a lot of options you can explore it's uh, physically accurate, like you know, pretty much whatever the you know uh, DSLR, all the camera, physical cameras provides, all the settings are here. You know, you can explore them. Pretty much accurate. Even, in fact, you can, you know, uh, connect this camera, Unreal camera, to the you know physical camera also. When we when we do the virtual production, you know, we we generally you know, do that. Like we <clears throat> we sync these Unreal camera and you know real camera. And post processing again, uh, post, so this is where the whole thing changes. So, this is just a lighting, but it has uh, no GUI, no FG, nothing, just, just a base light. But in order to achieve the frame quality, uh, RTX helped the best, like, you know. Uh, a lot of difference between these two like and everything sets so even in the the default one all this you know you see this additional uh, you know uh, refractions which are not exactly supposed to be and all the light bounces happens really really well reflections ref refractions everything works at the right you know? mm. at the same time uh this is where you know uh Filmmaking exactly, you know, comes like choreograph. Ask your director, ask your, you know, whoever is doing the choreography. Ask, ask them to sit next to you. Then, you know, keep exploring all, you know, parameters and get the right values. <clears throat> and build your own tools. This is also like, <clears throat> uh, when you do, when you use the game engines, be like a game artist. <clears throat> So be like a game artist and <clears throat> think that way. And the same way, be like a game programmer. Of course, we cannot <clears throat> just like you, but uh, talk to game programmer. You know, understand, uh, explain your process, and you know, ask them suggestions. You know, how can I make it more, you know, more faster, or how can I make it more better? You know, definitely they'll help you. You know, they maybe they'll write some scripts some tools for you you know in order to make it you know production more faster so there is another tool you know which we have created during the arc method the old uh, that's where you know this is the pipeline you know we used uh, we tried uh Alembic at the same time we tried uh, a big method as well. so these characters are alembic uh, and exported so this character has over 30 shaders and every time whenever you import <coughs> Of course, there is a uh, inbuilt Unreal uh, uh, transfer also. For that, you need to uh, follow this naming and everything right. So during this time, so we set a one character with all the final shaders, everything, which is the big character, in the left hand side, all left hand side. And when you import the new okay, new animation into this one, so that's where again a manual job. So we need to get all the shaders to the new character which is new imported character 
new animation. So we want to reduce this time also. We created another tool uh, which just transfer all the shaders, this character to other character. So, and this was helped, you know, really, really well. And at the same time, keep an eye on optimization because you're dealing with uh, game engines. <clears throat> so game engines, of course, these days becoming, you know, really, really powerful. Like, you know, if you see Unreal 5, <clears throat> And can handle millions of you know billions of polygons. Uh, where we were using Unreal 4 that time, like so quite you know a year ago. <laughs> so, so always uh, because there is no limitation. Like when you make an animation, always you know we go crazy. We want every detail to visible. So when you go, but always you know keep an eye on optimization also. You know understand how optimization system works because. We cannot skip optimization part when it comes to real time. So understand how LVD system works. Basically, LVD system is like uh, if some some object is far to camera, uh, far to the camera, uh, it reduces the polys and everything automatically because it Unreal has inbuilt system. Uh, you know, it detects the different you know, level of details. Uh, object goes if go comes closer, it will be high detail because high. Uh, let's say I have a one lakh polycon asset. I go close to the uh, object. It shows the one leg. If I go far, it becomes it depends on the level you said. It becomes slowly, you know, uh, it, polycon gets reduced. So you don't need to see the you know, same one leg polycon even if it is a kilometer away. So so set this LOD system and get utilized of you know all the optimization techniques you know which Unreal has to provide and. Asset and material in instantiation and bitmaps. This is you now by default in even real support <coughs> and real gives and use blueprints for the crowds and vehicle simulations. Uh, you know, uh, there are more tools you know you gotta explore those stuff. And but overall, a developing uh, animation movie in you know uh, using the real time uh, game engine is super 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 cost effective. Anybody can produce. Uh, you know, uh, and at the best level of you know quality, and that's with that I'll end the session and question and answers. So Vishnu, we have uh, around five to six questions. Uh, okay, I, sure. I can assist you uh, asking those questions. So sure, sure. this Please question go. is considering Gametronics is a game studio majorly. How long it took for your team to get into TV animation series and start <laughs> delivering? <laughs> okay, so interesting one. So when when the suggestion came across, like we kind of freaked out. Okay, uh, because none of the studio member uh, having ex uh, you know experience in uh, production. Uh, so we were like clueless. Okay, we understand games. We know the Unreal. But we don't know how to make the animation movies, so that's where like we faced many challenges, and uh, we had to understand how and you know how movie production works. So and it took pretty less time, but still though, uh, like we spent around fifteen to twenty days, twenty days, somewhere less than a month. Uh, we spent uh, quick R and D with it. Uh, we check the iClo and other stuff also. iClo is also really, really helpful, you know. And and uh, since we have in-house uh, technical team and uh, tech artists, we emphasize a lot on technical artists. So because technical artists are, you know, the really, really strong bridge between the artists and programmers. So they they set everything uh, right. So that's where, like, you know, uh, took him about a month. And we were on track, and we created our own uh, pipeline, uh, you know, based on our uh, past knowledge. We have been using Unreal, uh, you know, uh, more than 15 years. Like it's quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So we know in and out. So we could pull it off. The translation phase was a little rough, but yeah. Okay. So when you do something new, we have to write. Uh, so the next question is. What are the advantages from past perspective for any existing animation studio to make a shift to Unreal Base 5? Okay, <clears throat> lot of advantages which I have already you know, showed you. Uh, 
first of all a cost which is the major thing uh, i think cost for us it's you know came down to probably 65 to 70 percent around uh, that's uh, you know if you go for it uh, if we talk about it so let's say typical uh, uh, you know pipeline traditional pipeline uh, 22 minutes episode you know i have to produce 22 minutes episode probably somewhere between 50 to 60 70 you know uh, headcount we need headcount means resources uh, we need generally people use a company so uh, so we were you know uh, less than 20 uh, like pretty much everything managed uh, internally and the motion capture helped a lot but cost is the first thing and the second thing is you know what exactly you're doing which is the most important thing here like every team member knows okay this is the scene i see uh, the minute maybe first first few uh, you know maybe first week everything at the base level lighting guy he's just doing you know some basic lighting setup and everything modeling guy is importing his own stuff some guy other guy is shading guy who is doing all the shaders and everything probably the first first week you see you know a, a very rough output after that you start seeing final output because everything is aligned so scene is ready final scene anybody can come and put his assets and see how it looking in the final output that's where it shines okay like uh unless the traditional pipeline the like, okay i gave my asset okay fine i'll have to wait till the final render gets done then i'll go in the edit department or i'll i'll go in the render you know, department check my how is looking you know, uh, my asset that's not the case in the real time you'll see in so which is the great thing so yeah okay so the next question is how much time it takes to perform picking up on vocab data that that's usable in format for both face capture and body capture yeah so again uh, when it comes to cleaning up so some of the mm, uh you know if you talk about accents uh some of the uh you know motion capture suits they come with the uh, ai based uh you know cleanup pretty much a uh, that you know accents i checked with accents pretty much they you know they take care of them they really take care of them uh, cleaning but if anything specific you know let's say i move my hand uh like this immediately uh which is let's say if the director want a little more further immediately we can reshoot it actually but even if you are in some phase, you know, where I need some more you know, uh, shift, we can do it. Depends on, again, uh, cleanup is completely depends on the you know, how animators are you know, doing, how the cleanup guys are you know, performing. So that's, for us, it took about a week for you know, getting all the cleanup and everything for this episode. Maybe you can calculate how, you know, depends on the complexity also. So, yeah. This is the some rough number to you know get you make you understand okay so the next question is do you guys provide assistance guidance services for any aspiring studios who are willing to make a shift to real-time work of course we do at the same time uh, we are happy to do like uh, whenever teaching comes we come first and you know uh, you know ex you know show what exactly we did and you know what kind of what kind of problems we face and how we came you know, we work on that and then we always there to support uh you know uh, we keep doing that that's our you know passion uh of course like in the beginning you know like you said uh, we are the passionate studio we are the tech you know tech driven so we always explore new stuff and we always keep supporting you know other studios and a lot of talks are happening you know we are talking to them uh giving some suggestions at the same time unreal itself is providing a lot of support <clears throat> you know community is going really really big from unreal side also uh unreal has a lot of programs also you know uh they are literally you know uh, training each and every you know uh, interested guy uh, a lot of programs are being conducted by unreal short movies and etc short movie program so yeah uh it's, it's like a widely open uh, you know uh, situation at this moment you can always reach out to me uh if you have any you know uh 
personal support anything needed we always you know we can figure out and you know take it forward uh, so next question is what is the team structure required for pulling off an animated show using a okay uh, <clears throat> team structure <clears throat> uh, first thing is first uh, everyone should know unreal you know <clears throat> before we jump into unreal you need to understand how unreal is working you know what is the fundamentals behind unreal understand that part, you know be like you know you're a technical artist explore complete unreal in and out <laughs> okay and then uh, uh, and the rest of the pipeline is pretty much unreal you know laid out really nicely so everyone will understand quickly but that's focus on uh, these things like you said you know uh, optimization and you know all tools and deal you know providing because until marketplace is real you know become really really big you know a lot of data is available even if you're going with real time you know very big photo realistic stuff you have a mega scan asset which is like you know a uh, big thing at the same time you have a meta human like that's like a killer so even if you want to try something you can you know with the mega scan assets for the environment and meta huge the meta human characters and you can quickly try something you know some movie uh, you know as an experiment and then later you can go for you know your own custom uh, designed uh, you know episodes so maybe come more conceptualized and a little stylized yeah stylized is like that's where you know even unreal shines really really well uh unreal supports shader support is really really good and you know uh, tone shading and etc so you don't need uh, to stick to any specific you know <clears throat> you know limit under the any specific limitations go widely try exploring all those post process settings and different tone shadings and get you know a uh, completely different look to the your you know uh, your frame okay. uh, so any next question yeah. yeah next question is unreal 5 specific are you planning to utilize that Okay. Are you planning to utilize the NIT in your future, future projects? Uh, sorry, you're breaking. Uh, yeah, so the question is, are you planning to utilize the NIT technology in your future projects? Uh, again, you broke. I'm so real. Okay. Uh, so the question is, are you, plan I mean, are you planning to utilize the NIT technology in your future projects? NANIT. Okay, NANIT. Yeah, yeah. NANIT. Yes, definitely. Uh, that, that's the future, right? That's like uh that's a really really fantastic thing right you can use the billions of billions of you know, polygons uh in the scene and it's it works like a charm <clears throat> so why not that that's where no that's what we're looking for every gaming industry and uh, is also looking forward to that actually so because <clears throat> uh even in the games also we keep using uh we restrict uh, you know when we go for the uh, larger worlds we restrict polycon you know uh we compromise sometimes so uh but once the once the nanit comes, it, it's a game changer. So why not? Definitely, that's the that's the way you know where we're looking forward. Nice. Um, so do you think a one man show can pull off an Unreal based animation show, or is that a pure madness? One man. Do you think? Yes, definitely. Yeah, actually, actually, one yeah. One man show means like one person working on the project, right? Yep. Uh, you, you're breaking Rupesh. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so yeah, the question is, can, can oh. one person pull off unreal based animation mm. show or that's considered to be a pure madness? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, there is a possibility actually. Like, uh, even if one person wants to pull off, so uh you know uh i see a lot of general you know 3d general artists like you know who can uh make model texture animation uh unreal stuff <clears throat> you know who's kind of an all-rounders i saw many people uh you know even if you even you could, everybody can do that actually <clears throat> you just limit you know have a, a very clear uh, goal uh you know a very short clip or something uh have a clear vision <clears throat> and get all the required assets <clears throat> you don't need to build everything uh you know a uh, lot of stuff available on the marketplace find which one you know uh, works for you clearly and get those assets uh, uh you know and then you know definitely uh, it is possible actually 
even in fact myself i did uh, uh in a couple of clips uh at the same time you know guys also keep doing a lot of you know uh, small small clips for you know just for a fun sake it is possible actually but all you you need to have is you need to have a really really strong knowledge in angel just get that the rest of everything is anyway you guys know must have known this all the uh, max my stuff okay uh so one final question what is the minimum Jeez. hardware requirements like cpu and gpu to make short animation movie in angel <clears throat> okay i would say uh go for rtx anything uh keep at least 6 gb is the minimum <clears throat> because the minute you increase the sample count in the you know in the batch rendering so it takes you know it starts taking more time so we don't want to reduce the sample count you know and render uh, render some uh, bad frames mm -hmm. so we want to you know we want to bring the beauty right so so go for rtx that is the minimum rtx with 6 gb graphics card uh, and if you can go go for uh, 3090 which is the the current you know best one and at the same time uh, add a fed ripper to that which like you know uh, which works like you know maybe that mission equals to traditional render forms probably i can compare uh, maybe 50 of them yeah so yeah have a strong pc with rtx and other stuff have have at least 120 gb ram uh, if not at least go for 64 which is the base minimum like. okay uh, so yeah we are done with all the questions <clears throat> Uh, I would like to thank Vishnu for a very insightful session. We highly appreciate Vishnu for making being with us your guide. Thank you so much, Vishnu. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, next session on the tech track is very cute. That has already started. Okay. Bye bye.